What's up everybody? Welcome to the second part of the tutorial on making the water level indicator. Today we're going to be taking the circuit from the breadboard and making a permanent installation on some perf board. And the first thing we need to do before we do that is make sure everything's working. Uh, when I did the last tutorial I didn't have two 547 transistors but now I do. I went to the store like I said and let's make sure everything's working. That's the red one working. That's the green one working. Everything works. Okay, so now that we've tested it to see that it was still working, um, we're gonna go ahead and add some extension wire to the LEDs, to the buzzer, and we're also gonna add, uh, we're gonna solder some wires, the battery clip, and uh, an extension wire to the on-off switch. Uh, the reason why we're going to do that is because we want some flexibility with what we can do with these components. And if we just put them right into the perf board, uh, what we can do with them after is quite limited. Uh, if you did some exact measurements on the, uh, the case here, or whatever case you're using, then you could probably do that. But I chose to just put some extensions on these components, and then when I'm done with the the perf board I just uh, hot glue it right there in the back and then I can move around these parts and put them through the holes that I made for them. So that's the plan right now let's just go ahead and get started. Um, what I'm going to do is actually cut off some of these leads so something like this and I'm just going to have to remember that this is the positive end the longer one And you want to save these because it's going to come in handy later when we are soldering the components to the perf board. So I'm going to bring in my helping hands tool here. And clip this up like that. And Go ahead and just take the wire and kind of, I'm using really old helping hands here. Let me take this out. Uh, I'm going to take this red wire and that's what I use always for the positive or the power line and that way I just stay somewhat uh, organized with what I'm doing and I can remember. Uh, I do, and that's pretty common, red for power, black for ground, and you might want to use that, that system yourself. And then when you're doing other connections, you can use other color wires. But anyway, what we're doing here is we're going to solder this wire to that lead, which is the positive colored wire for me anyway, and the positive lead of the LED. And how we're going to do that, I'm using a 50 watt soldering iron, just a standard basic thing. And I'm going to put some flux right where I want to solder. And the reason why I do that is it's going to make the, the soldering job real nice. It's going to smooth out the solder over the entire connection there. And that really, it, it's happened sometimes without the, the flux, but I find more often than not, it's better just to use the flux. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and and hopefully you can see how it thinned out over the entire connection there and that's what we're looking for. That's going to be the a real connection there. And if you look, hopefully you can see that the the solder has encompassed the entire connection and that's really good. That's what we want. So now that I have the positive done, I'm going to go ahead and do that to the negative as well. Again, I'm going to cut this off but save that for later. Put it right there. Sweet. Take my soldering iron. And put it right there. And a couple of notes, you definitely want to be careful when you're soldering. It's very hot, obviously. And you also want to be careful of those fumes. You don't want to breathe those in. That can be quite nasty for you. So that's how that's done. We got two solid things. And I'm going to go ahead and do the rest and then come back 
Okay, so now I've added the extensions for the three components here, the two LEDs and the buzzer, and I'm just gonna check to make sure that they're still working. And if you don't have like a multimeter or anything like that, you can just plug them back into the breadboard and hook up a battery. And as you can see, everything is still working. So the extensions are a go. Next thing I'm gonna do is put the switch on the battery. 